that we have gotten to know a little bit about you guys. Now we want to show you who we are and who is going to take a, a part in this webinar today. So I'd like to ask my wonderful colleagues um, to turn on their cameras. Uh, like I said, it's 6 p.m. here in Montreal. This is after hours. So I really cannot thank you all for being here uh, with us. And uh, as I was telling students here, they will it'll, it, it'll be totally worth their time okay guys over to you so you can introduce yourselves hi everyone uh, my name is asta i'm the incoming president of the engineering undergraduate society hi everyone my name is amanda young uh, i am an academic advisor in the faculty of engineering and i also manage recruitment as well so welcome Welcome everyone. I'm Kayla Follinsby. I'm the Associate Director of the Engineering Student Center. Hi everyone. My name is Lorraine. I'm the Skills Development Advisor at the McGill Engineering Student Center and I work a lot with the Engineering Career Center as well, which you'll hear about in this presentation. I think one of our colleagues is having maybe a little bit of difficulty in the audio. Amanda, you may want to introduce her while she um, gets ready. So Melissa is having some technical difficulties. Um, but it's uh, our other colleague, uh, her name is Melissa Kinney. She is also an academic advisor in the faculty and she's gonna be on uh, helping answer some questions. Uh, she's not gonna be presenting, but she's gonna help answer your questions throughout the presentation. Okay, well, thank you very, very much. Um, and now I will hand it over to um, Amanda. And like I said, please feel free to um, ask questions. Um, because again, I'm going to be monitoring them um, alongside um, my colleagues here, and we will make sure to address them as we move forward. So I'd like um, our, my colleagues to turn off their cameras, except for the person presenting. Um, Amanda, we cannot see the presentation. We see a, a white screen. So sorry about this, guys. We are uh, making sure that it works. You may want to probably go back to the previous one and we can do it like that in, in present in not in presentation mode but in the other one so thank you very much we have over 150 people there we go we can see your screen now um thank you very much for um attending um and then there we go so over uh, to you uh that's white again unfortunately I don't know if maybe there we go. I think we're going to have to leave it at that. Maybe you can make it a little bit bigger and then that's it. We can get started. Great. Thanks very much, Patricia. And thanks, Amanda, for running the slideshow. Welcome again, everyone. It's a real pleasure to be with you, whether it's evening or morning or midnight, wherever you are. Uh, it's our pleasure really to come and, and talk to you and share a little bit about our fantastic faculty and, uh, and the McGill experience. Before we get started, I'd like to offer a land acknowledgement, which is an important component of many events at McGill. McGill is situated on the traditional territory of the Ganyan Gayaga, a place which has long served as a site of meeting and exchange amongst nations. We recognize and respect the Ganyan Gayaga as the traditional custodians of the land and water on which our university is situated. So welcome again to the bicentennial class of McGill University. Uh, you may or may not know that this year, 2000, 21 is the 200th anniversary of McGill. And uh, stay tuned, there are lots of events coming up where you can participate in some of the, the bicentennial events, some, some lots of history and, and information about the last 200 years. So to get us started, Amanda, you can go to the next slide. The Faculty of Engineering, I'm sure all of you who've, who've been offered a position, a place at our, in our faculty, are familiar with, uh, with engineering in general, our faculty specifically, and, and the Dean has a vision of creating or, or educating globally minded leaders who are equipped to solve the problems that matter. So really this is what we aim to do in all of our academic and para-academic endeavors in the faculty, to create self-reliant engineers and designers who will become the leaders of tomorrow, to define the path of future discovery in engineering and technological research, 
and make innovative and socially responsible contributions to the engineering community and to society at large. So all of those things are really important to us when we think about educating engineers, giving you the technical skills and the theoretical knowledge to be successful in your career, but also understanding the social um, dimensions behind the decisions that you make in your future careers, engineers, architects, and urban planners. Next slide, please. The Faculty of Engineering, some kind of details, statistics, logistics here. We have six departments. Uh, bioengineering is the newest department, and recently, just uh, this, this last year, it was accredited. It received accreditation at the Canadian Engineering Accreditation Board. We also have chemical engineering, civil engineering, electrical and computer engineering, of which software is a part, mechanical engineering, and binding and materials engineering. And then a really important, and we're very proud of our schools, a component of, of the faculty are the schools of architecture and urban planning, where architects and urban planners are trained in design, design approaches. In addition to those sort of formal academic programs and departments and schools, we have several institutes that bring together researchers and students from across disciplines to explore different ideas. So the Institute for Public Life of uh, Arts and Ideas, the Aerospace Engineering Institute, which is uh, Montreal is a, is a very is a hotbed of aerospace activity, the Institute for Advanced Materials, and the Trottier Institute for Sustainability and Engineering and Design. Our undergraduate population is incredibly diverse. We currently have, and we've had a sort of steady state of about 3,400 undergraduate students, about a third of whom are female, and about a third of whom also are international. McGill represents or has students coming from over 150 different countries. And so as we saw, I think Patricia in the chat, uh, students from all across the world come to study in our fantastic institution. At the undergraduate level, we offer a bachelor's of engineering, a bachelor of software engineering, and a bachelor of science in the School of Architecture. Next slide. You'll hear a lot more about experiential learning opportunities throughout this presentation from my colleagues, from ASPA and, and Lorraine. Um, I want to tell you a little bit right now about uh, some of the uh, experiential learning opportunities that we're really proud of. Many of our students participate in engineering internships or co-op programs, so they, they earn money and get hands-on job experience as they work towards their degree. Uh, many also participate in the summer undergraduate research experience, which is a 16-week full-time paid research position to work with a faculty member on their research project. And we distribute funds to student groups in the form of student initiative funds to support conference travel and, and other student initiatives. Um, you can read about more of our recruitment outcomes, the graduation statistics, career development, all of these slides are available on the Engineering Career Center website. So please take a look if you're interested in learning more about uh, the outcomes after graduation of, of our students. Next slide. The Dean of the Faculty of Engineering and, and the faculty's leadership have um, put forward four different initiatives that are really core to our educational philosophy. And students, undergraduate students and graduate students in the faculty can participate in these different initiatives and the events and activities that these initiatives host in various ways. But I think it gives you a sense of our educational mission, which can be summed up as uh, innovation by design. And those are really the key terms that, uh, that our faculty are aiming to, uh, to, to, to give to students that are, that are studying in our faculty. The Empower Initiative is, aims to help students develop leadership and personal and professional development through engagement and experiential learning. So there's lots of different ways that you can engage in, in experiential learning throughout your career at McGill. The EIDEA initiative is aimed at uh, committing to a diverse, equitable, and inclusive community. And so we aim to build this into hiring practices, education, and the para-academic activities that we support. There's the ELATE initiative, which aims to help students and professors um, implement effective and meaningful forms of instruction and learning, so uh, active learning techniques and, and pedagogy. And finally, the Engine Center, which is dedicated to supporting innovation in all its forms and has funding, guidance, and mentorship for projects that are aimed at, uh, at getting technology out into the real world. So a little bit more about Engine. Um, we have a dedicated student space that just opened up, it feels like recently, maybe two years ago now. 
the engine hub. Uh, there's an entrepreneur in residence. There are business mentorships. There are uh, there are resources that can connect you with with venture capitalists and with people who can support your project from inception, from the idea, right up into commercialization of technology. They offer one-on-one -on -one advising and coaching. They have uh, speaker series and workshop series, lean startup um, workshops and uh, skills development workshop series, networking events, and I mentioned funding. They also distribute a large amount of funding to support projects every year. So if part of you are, if you're, if you like to tinker, if you're interested in getting your idea out into the public sphere, the Engine Hub is really a fantastic place to uh, to look at. I want to introduce myself. I said I was the director of the Engineering Student Center, which we know as MESC. And my colleagues Lorraine, Amanda, and Melissa are all members of MESC. We're all uh, we're all dedicated to providing support to engineering students. So we have the Student Affairs Office, which offers academic advising. And now, of course, we're operating remotely. We have it academic advising through chat, through remote appointments, and through email. Um, and the Career Center, which Lorraine will tell you more about shortly, so I won't steal her thunder, but we also offer career support services to help students find their, their dream job. We also co-run the Engineering Peer Tutoring Service with the Engineering Undergraduate Society, and we host a local wellness advisor who can help students find resources to solve other, solve um, maybe wellness related issues or she also offers one-on-one -on -one counseling appointments and referrals to services in the community and at McGill to support wellness, as well as workshops and, and other um, information sessions for students. So the FAQ doc that Patricia mentioned, which if, you, if you're just joining us, you can check out in the handout section in the control panel of the GoToWebinar. Please check out the FAQ docs, and if you have any questions about any of these services, they hopefully should be answered there. The Engineering Peer Tutoring Service, I want to just mention um, because it's one of our sort of flagship programs and it's something we're really, really proud of. They, it's a, a, peer, a free peer tutoring service hosted by senior students who've taken courses before. And the aim really is to help support uh, junior students in their first year courses, year zero and year one math courses um, and science courses, as well as a few courses at, at higher levels that can be really challenging. So these are students who've done really well in a course, who have good relationships with the instructors, and who offer weekly tutorial services, one-on-one -on -one sessions, group advising sessions, as well as midterm and final exam review sessions to help students engage with and really comprehend the material. Some of our courses are really large. Of course, the first year courses uh, tend to be pretty big and it can be difficult to, to make an appointment with a TA or a prof. So our peer tutors are a fantastic bridge resource to help you understand the material and really support you in your, in your work. I was just reading today the nominations for the EPTS award for this year, and the kind of testimonials that students offer are, are really heartwarming. They, they say that you know, the, the tutors really help them to understand not just memorize material in order to do well on a test, but actually understand, comprehend the information because they presented it in, in a different way from the prof or the TA. So this is uh, something that I really encourage you to, to look into when you, um, when you join us next year. I think that's the end of my session. So I'd like to introduce my colleague, Lorraine Donald, who will talk to you a little bit about the Engineering Career Center and the Empower Initiative. Take it away, Lorraine. Thank you, Kayla. Hi everyone, thanks again for joining us. Um, we're switching gears a little bit and I'm here to talk to you about the Engineering Career Center and the services that we offer here. So in a nutshell, the, the advisors at the center provide you with coaching and all sorts of opportunities uh, to help you gain the skills and confidence you need you know, for your first internship or your first job. When you're thinking about a career center, I don't want you to think about it as being the place where you go, you know, two months before you graduate and, and you're looking for a job. The Career Center at MESC is really meant to help you from day one. We have an internship program and co-op programs that you'll hear about in a, in a few slides. And we can help you prepare 
early on for those uh, for those first experiences. So in the next slide, you'll see some of the, the programs and activities that we host. Uh, there's a really a full spectrum of services. So we, we do advising, mock interviews. So you can meet with us one-on-one -on -one right now remotely. We can do 15-minute appointments or half-hour appointments. And here we can review your, your CV, your cover letter, maybe later on closer to graduation. If you're thinking about grad school, we can look at your uh, your statements for grad school. We host tons of career skills workshops where we'll go over how to create a CV, how to even write a cover letter, networking skills. Um, we host speaker series and industry panels, networking events, industry visits. And of course, this year we had to move everything remotely, but we were still able to, to offer all sorts of great experiences for, for students to learn about different industries, to meet uh, recruiters, to meet engineers in the field. We host career fairs, which I'll get to a little bit more in detail. And we, we run the engineering internship program and we'll help the folks who are in co-op programs. So we don't necessarily take care of the co-op programs ourselves, you, if you are in a co-op program, you will have an advisor specifically for that, but we can help you get ready for the career portion. Other things that we do, we work with student societies, teams, and clubs. So oftentimes, uh, you know, if, if a student society is, is looking to partner with industry, if they need some professional engineers to come and judge an event, we can liaise and help make that happen. We work with industry professionals to get them into McGill, to post their jobs. Um, and we also work with profs and staff to, to share our knowledge, to help, um, to help students get prepared for their next move, whether it be an internship, a co-op, or you know, their first job post-graduation. Take the next slide, please. A small example of some of the, the events that we do. Here I have some posters from posters and pictures from past events. Uh, if we start at the top right, I hosted a video game industry panel a little while ago, and this was really great. We had uh, all sorts of people coming in from WB, EA, Ubisoft to come and speak to students about the realities of, of working in the industry. Just below. Uh, Ubisoft Day at McGill. This is something that happens on a yearly basis where Ubisoft comes to spend the day and they'll set up a booth where you can chat with recruiters or you can chat with, uh, with engineers, designers, developers, and then assist some sort of technical talk in the afternoon. Moving on, we have a picture of, this was a networking event for, uh, I think it was with PAL, Promoting Opportunities for Women in Engineering. So we'll help uh, facilitate, we'll work on the logistics to, to help make these events happen. And that very last one doesn't look terribly interesting, but you'll notice on the floor of that picture, it's a Google map. So this is uh, myself and a bunch of students visiting Google in Montreal. We can't take pictures in their offices so this is just standing outside at the end so we put on all of these events so that you can learn uh you know about topics uh emerging trends we we try and get you in front of industry professionals early on so you can start getting used to networking and speaking with people all of these kind of events serve to um to get you ready to try and figure out what you want your next step to be uh, and to learn what's going on behind the scenes. So the Career Center is a lot more, you know, than just the job. There's, there's everything else behind it to get you ready to get the job. Moving on, we have the Tech Fair. This is the big career fair that I was telling you about a couple of slides earlier. It's the largest one at McGill. It's dedicated to engineering and science. Uh, discipline. And we have two days in the fall and two days in the winter. Typically, this 
event is held in person. However, this year we went remote and we'll likely have a remote edition as well in the fall. So you're all first year students. You might not necessarily know what it is you want to do just yet, but I do encourage you to mark the dates on your calendar and attend so that you can find out about industries, speak to people. Uh, you might just even land your first internship or co-op. There are jobs out there for, for freshmen and junior students. It gives you a chance to start making connections and practice. So the tech fair, during tech fair season, not only do you have the chance to connect with uh, recruiters and hiring managers one-on-one, -on -one, but you also get the chance to attend information sessions to, to find out about the company. So maybe you're not ready to, to commit and, and start uh, having conversations. Maybe you just sort of want to attend these info sessions and, and get a feel for what's going on. Either way, I encourage you to show up in October and, and come and check it out. It'll just make your next career fairs that much easier moving forward. Next slide. So co-ops, like I mentioned before, we don't really manage the co-ops at the Engineering Career Center, but I just wanted to bring it up here that, uh, well, first of all, if you're in co-op, you likely know about it, so this may not apply to, to all of you in the crowd today. Uh, what the Career Center can do for you is review your CV, help you prepare with a mock interview. If you need help, um, you know, searching for jobs, maybe we can go over a bit of a plan for you. Um, but typically you will have maybe a, a co-op advisor assigned to you that, that you can work with. Moving on to the next slide, though, I'll speak to you about the engineering internship program. So for all of the students that are not in a co-op program, uh, so here we're talking uh, electrical, computer, chemical, bio -eng, mechanical, did I get everyone? Everyone else is not in co-op. You can be a part of the engineering internship program. Uh, so the idea here is a little bit similar to co-op, but more a la carte, I guess you could say. If you choose to do an internship, you can, and it can be um, registered on your transcript. You'll get to make money, learn about different industries, and it really helps you acquire this sort of competitive hiring edge. Your internship can be four, eight, 12, or 16 months long. Um, it can start at any term. It's recorded on your transcript, and it's available to all students, whether uh, you're an international student, permanent resident, or Canadian citizen. Two or more internships, there's this, um, it triggers a change on your transcript and it will mention engineering internship program. So bachelor's of mechanical engineering internship program, just to sort of really showcase that you had uh, industry experience that the university um, facilitated. And we can help you, we don't give you the job, but we can help you find the job so we have a, a job bank available for you to access and of course just like for a co-op program we can help you with your cv and get you ready for those first interviews i think that's about it for the engineering career center but moving on i want to speak a little bit about empower <coughs> excuse me so like kayla mentioned this is all about leadership personal and professional development. And this is the initiative that, that I take care of a little bit more at MESC. So I guess the idea here in a nutshell is, is to help you take all of these experiences and try and make sense of them so that you're ready for your next experience, you know? Um, there are a lot of extracurricular activities at McGill, a lot of curricular activities. Maybe not everything makes sense all the time. Why am I doing this kind of work? Or how does this club serve me? Uh, I can help you make, make a little bit of sense of that. You're gonna get a lot of 
personal, professional, and leadership development um, exposure through, you know, community activities, through student life, uh, through your internship, even in class and doing research. So I'm, I'm here to sort of help you sort all of that out. And in the next slide, I just have a couple of activities listed um, that I put together within the Empower initiative. So the first one, Global Challenges, this is an award that was created to help you put your engineering skills to work um, in an unpaid service learning, humanitarian, or volunteer opportunity. The idea is if in the summertime you have the chance to do one of these sort of nonprofit or volunteer opportunities or do a paid internship, we want you to, to go forward and, and do that volunteer opportunity. And hopefully, you know, maybe make a few dollars so that you don't put it aside to take that internship. It, it's kind of there to, to, to help you along and, and pursue your dreams, I guess, to a certain degree. <clears throat> the Individual Development Plan, this is kind of fun. This is coming out of graduate studies where they've created this huge program to help you identify, articulate, and prioritize your goals. Sounds really big. Uh, it might even sound scary. Uh, but the idea is that our workshops can, can kind of guide you through this self-discovery and reflection. So if you decided to take part in this program, you know, in your first year, you might have a couple of goals in mind. When you do this program again in your third or, or your last year, your priorities and your goals will have shifted. That's okay, that's completely normal. But this is here uh, to help you along. How to change the world, this is one of these other initiatives that I put on a couple of times a year. And here students get to tackle uh, sustainability and innovation challenges with uh, a diverse group of engineers, business and science students from other universities and um, you get to use the UN Sustainable Development Goals Framework to, to move this forward. Hopefully you get the slides after this presentation and you can click on these links. If not, you can always type in, you know, McGill Engineering and Power. It'll likely be the first or second choice on, on Google and you can go check it out a little bit more about how to change the world. Um, and then, of course, I put on a lot of info sessions and workshops to uh, introduce all sorts of activities, which I'm sure you'll hear about with Amanda and Asa coming up. So I'll leave it there for now. Thank you. Okay, thank you guys. While um Oh, there you go. Okay, you took care of it. Yeah, we can see your screen. I was just going to mention, um, thank you for your questions. I can totally see them. Um, um, and I, like I said, I'm going to address them at the end of the presentation. So thank you and keep the questions coming. Over to you. Hi, everyone. So my name is Amanda Young. Uh, I am an academic advisor and I manage recruitment for the Faculty of Engineering. And I'm going to talk to you a little bit about some topics relating to academics and extracurriculars. So first of all, I'm going to briefly talk about course registration. So as newly admitted students, you probably have questions about which courses you're supposed to register for once registration opens in June. So the main thing that you have to be aware of is your departmental or school curriculum. Every program in engineering has a suggested curriculum. You can see an example on my screen here. Um, this is for uh, chemical engineering uh, last year, fall 2020. The new curriculums haven't been released yet. They're going to be released in the next week or two. So these curriculums are based on your entry type. So there is one for every program, there's a CEGEP entry, so a Quebec entry, and a non CEGEP entry, so anybody who is coming from outside of Quebec. Uh, so this example that you see here is for a non CEGEP, non Quebec student. Um, so if you are a non 
<clears throat> SAGEP student, you would most likely have at least one or two semesters of uh, freshman courses, which you can see outlined in this curriculum example here. And these freshman courses might be reduced if you are expecting to receive transfer credits. Um, so transfer credits are kind of a big concern for newly admitted students. So it's very important that you uh, review the transfer credit website for full instructions and guidelines because there are different procedures depending on the admit type and the transfer uh, credits you're expecting to receive. So for example, if you have uh, high school AP courses or you did a French BAC or maybe you're coming from another university. There are different guidelines for different types of courses and credits. It's also really important that you check your McGill email frequently, uh, as this is how MESC, so our unit, uh, as well as your department or your school is going to be communicating with you regarding uh, course registration, transfer credits, any sort of events or info sessions that we're having. So it's really important that you check your student McGill email um, for all those uh, communications. And we'll also be having um, registration sessions starting in June to help you with this process uh, and troubleshoot any issues that you might have regarding your course registration. So look out for emails regarding those dates and times. Uh, it'll be the first week of, of June. Uh, and also please refer to our FAQ handout uh, as more uh, as it has all the relevant links and websites and common questions. Um, and it also has um, all of your departmental and school contacts that you'll need to know. Um, so moving on to my next slide. Um, transferring within engineering. So sometimes students are offered admission uh, to our faculty, but it may not be into the major um, that you were hoping for or that you intend to stay in. So for example, you were accepted to civil engineering, but you're hoping to transfer maybe to bioengineering. Um, so transferring within engineering, it is possible. However, it's really important for you to note that it is competitive and it's not necessarily guaranteed. So students are permitted to apply for a transfer. It's called intra-faculty transfer after their first year of study has been completed. So after you finish your fall and your winter courses, you can then apply for a transfer if you wish. Um, there are a couple of different eligibility requirements which you can review on our website. Again, that's linked in the FAQ document. The main thing that you, you have to know is that it's based on space, so the seats available in each of our respective programs, uh, as well as your CGPA. So this is what you're gonna see, this is what you see on the side here, the uh, CGPA cutoffs for previous years. This is just a guideline. It's, it's, it's meant to give you a sense of the cutoffs, but these are not hard and fast rules. As you can see, BioEng uh, 2019, the cutoff was 4.0, but just last year it went to a 3.7. So there is some variability within these, within these cutoffs, um, but the main thing you have to keep in mind is that it's, it's competitive and it's not guaranteed. Uh, and also the School of Architecture has their own screening process and application process. So you have to follow up with your department, uh, well, your school uh, for more information on that. And again, there's contact information in that FAQ document. Um, many of our newly admitted students also have questions about minors. So can I add a minor to my engineering program? Yes, you absolutely can. We recommend that you complete at least one year of academic studies before you add a minor to your program. This is just for you to get a sense of your workload, your courses, and also just what you're interested in, right? Um, our students add minors um, in many different fields. So you're allowed to add a minor that's offered at McGill, like any minor that's offered at McGill. So for example, English literature or economics or physics, whatever you're interested in. And then our faculty also offers numerous engineering minors, um, which are meant to provide you with added depth in your engineering program and exposure to different fields of research. So some of our popular minors include uh, biomedical engineering, software engineering, uh, you know, environmental, technological entrepreneurship. And we actually have two brand new minors, uh, one in applied artificial intelligence, which is offered by uh, the Department of uh, Electrical Computer Software Engineering, as well as uh, a minor in aerospace engineering, which is offered by uh, the uh, McGill Institute for Aerospace Engineering. MIAE. 
Uh, and you'll notice too that there's credits in brackets next to each one of these minors. So minors typically range from 18 to 24 credits. And important to note that most of our McGill courses are either three credits or sometimes four credits, but mostly three credits, right? Um, so if you're looking to add a minor to your program, um, most of these minors will have uh, minor advisors attached to them, so professors, but you can also at any time speak to a MESC advisor about your uh, minor courses and mapping that out. So an advisor like myself or Melissa. Um, so our faculty also really encourages students to uh, gain experiences outside of the classroom. Uh, it's a huge part of our faculty and it's, it's highly promoted. Um, one of the most popular methods of doing so would be student exchange and st study away. So student exchange is um, uh, you know, a very popular option, and we have uh, academic partnerships with over 160 universities in 40 countries, uh, you know, around the world. Uh, in the last two years, our faculty sent about 150 outgoing exchange students to our partner schools. Uh, and note that this number is lower than what, what it would normally be because of COVID and uh, the travel restrictions that were going on. Uh, typically, uh, our engineering students <clears throat> would go in uh, fall or a winter semester. Sometimes they do uh, both semesters, so a full year of exchange. Our most popular exchange destinations in engineering would be Singapore. So the National University of Singapore, uh, Nanyang is also in Singapore, quite popular. Uh, University of Hong Kong, University of Sydney in Australia, as well as EPFL in Switzerland. Those are our top five. Uh, for architecture students, uh, you have also lots of options. Uh, you can go to places like Belgium, Italy, Austria, France, Denmark, lots of different options for you as well. <clears throat> There's also a study away. If you don't necessarily want to do exchange or in addition to an exchange, you can do a study away term over the summer. Uh, this is more restrictive. There are only certain courses that you can take, uh, like electives and freshman courses, minor courses. But this is an option that's utilized by students who are often not staying in, in, in Montreal over the summer. So maybe home is elsewhere and they want to take a course while they're uh, at home over the summer or if they're traveling over the summer. So that's another great way to experience another university. And again, MESC advisors can help you uh, plotting out these options. Uh, we actually have a dedicated exchange advisor who helps you with your application uh, and uh, your transfer credits for exchange. Uh, there's also lots of opportunity for research in our faculty. It's something that we highly encourage students to partake in. Our main programs are the shore programs. So summer undergraduate research in engineering. Uh, the shore program happens every summer and it's a 16 week paid research traineeship with a McGill professor supervising you, oftentimes with their grad students. It's meant to give you uh, a taste of grad school and really develop your research skills as well as your soft skills. So presentation skills, uh, how to make a research poster, um, public speaking, etc. We give out approximately 130 awards every summer. Actually, this summer is our, our highest uh, ever uh, number of uh, shore positions. I think we had something like 165, 167 positions offered to students this summer. Um, so if you're interested in research, definitely look into the SHORE program. There's also SHORE International, which is essentially funding through our faculty for international research positions. It's a travel stipend, basically, for you to participate in research outside of Canada. Uh, students are expected to find their own research positions, and there are external um, organizations that help you do this and uh, we support you in, in those endeavors. And in 2019, our faculty supported 15 students uh, with approximately $75,000 worth of funding. Our students in 2019 went to places like uh, Berlin, Munich, California, Shanghai, uh, as well as Switzerland. So many different options if that's something that you're interested in. Uh, the last thing I'm going to talk about quickly is women in engineering. So our faculty is committed to diversity and promoting opportunities for our female students. Uh, one of the main avenues for doing this is POW, which is our uh, 
uh, one of our oldest and most active student groups, so promoting opportunities for women in engineering. They do a tremendous amount of work within our faculty. Uh, they have things like a professional mentorship program, student outreach within the Montreal community. They work with they work with the Empower program, which Lorraine was speaking about earlier. Uh, they have an annual speed networking event, as well as an annual conference. They also do speaker series and industry visits. Uh, they do quite a lot of work. Um, and they also attend a lot of our recruitment events. So if you come to any of our events uh, in the, over the next few months, you'll probably meet students from POW. And you can find more information on our website, which is listed below. And finally, um, I'd like to promote our next webinar, which is happening next week. It's the Women in Engineering webinar. It's happening on Thursday, April 29th from 6 to 7 p.m. Uh, again, you'll get to meet current students, members of POW, and we'll also be joined by special guests, uh, Professor Dorval Korchesny of the Department of Chemical Engineering and Professor Mashid from the Department of Bioengineering. Uh, they'll be speaking about their research, their work, their experiences, how to get engaged within the faculty. You do not have to be a student in those departments. This is a general talk uh, meant for all students in engineering and architecture, so we hope that you join us for that. And that's it for me. I'm gonna hand it over to Asa. She is our incoming US president and she's gonna to talk to you about the Engineering Undergraduate Society. Thanks, Amanda. And thank you everyone uh, for tuning into the webinar today. Um, alrighty, so I'm gonna be talking a little bit about the Student Society uh, for Engineering Undergraduate Students at McGill. And um, if you are enter as an engineering or architecture undergraduate student, you will be automatically an EUS member. One thing you'll find is McGill loves its acronym, so I'll be referring to the society as EUS um, from now on within the presentation. We can go to the next slide. All right, so the first thing I'm going to talk about is the structure of the EUS. Next slide. And so what is the EUS? Well, it's it's one student council um, and we have an executive team and a board of governors that basically oversees all of the activity from our EUS groups. Those EUS groups can be clubs. We have over 15 clubs, design teams that you um, heard about a bit earlier or committees. Next slide. So here are your incoming US executives for the 2021-2022 um, academic year. And they all have various committees under their portfolios um, and do a lot of great work within, within the US. I'm not going to get into too many details, but I'll tell you about how you can learn uh, more about them at the end of the presentation. Um, one other really important part of the EUS is all of the departmental societies. So these will be kind of your primary contacts um, towards the EUS. So we have eight societies um, for engineering and architecture. And if we go to the next slide, the departmental societies are really there to represent your interests to the EUS. And they host a variety of events that might be specific to your department and provide general um, social and academic support to their members. Um, the next part of the presentation will be all of the things that EUS does. Again, this won't be super comprehensive, but I'll tell you about how you can learn more. Um, so we host academic events, social events, and we have committees, clubs, and design teams that you can be a part of. We have services that you can take advantage of, and you can be sent to competitions and conferences uh, to represent McGill. So just to get started with academics, um, we have the Engineering Peer Tutoring Service, which is something that was talked about earlier. Um, this is a great opportunity for new students to get some tutoring and also older students to kind of mentor um, younger students and showcase their expertise within specific courses. And we have our, our tech fair um, that EUS helps organize. And we have Tech Week, which is a week long um, event where there's different seminars where you can learn more about um, professional skills that you can build as well as um, some academic workshops. Um, the next kind of big thing that we do is host a lot of social events. So for example, we have engineering week, uh, which is again a week long event full of activities where departments compete, each other, compete against each other for points. So this year chemical engineering won um, and 
in previous years, mechanical engineering has won, but that's always a really fun event to attend. We have orientation week and Frosh is a part of that. Um, we have open air pub, which happens twice a year. We have EUS sports teams, uh, Blues Pub, which is um, a weekly event that's held in the McConnell Engineering Building, which is kind of our hub for EUS. And there are many more social events spread out, um, spread throughout the year that you can attend. We also have many committees, and these committees are really kind of the heart of the EUS and do a lot of the work that we want to see um, happen within our student society. So I've listed some of them um, here. Junior Council is a committee that is really there to serve U0 and U1 students, so first year students, and represent their interests. We have our equity committee. We have Plumber's Ledger, which is one of the publications um, that is run by engineering students, and they also host various events throughout the year. We have our Orientation Week committee, um, the Engineering Adventure committee, and the Graduation committee, and, and so many more. We also have a variety of clubs. So some of these you heard earlier in the presentation, like POW. We also have um, clubs like the National Society of Black Engineers, Queer Engineer, the McGill Artificial Intelligence Society, Engineers Without Borders, and the National Organization for Business and Engineering, or NOBI. And these are just a few of the clubs, uh, but clubs are really there to kind of um, serve all departments and recognize specific interests that U.S. members may have. So if you're interested in any of these um, things, consider getting involved in this club. Next, we have design teams. So design teams are really unique to engineering and a great way to get some hands-on engineering experience outside of the classroom. So in all of these design teams, you will be working year long on a project, and then you will go to a competition, whether in Canada or internationally, and, and compete against other schools. Um, so it's a really unique experience and one that can build a lot of engineering um, skills. Next, we have our services. So most of these are located in the McConnell Engineering Building, which, like I said, is, is kind of the EUS hub. Um, some of our services include Copy EUS, which is our printing service. So you can go there and collect course packs or get a poster printed, for example, for a research project. We have the Cube, which is our 3D printing service, and it's entirely student run. We have Frostbite, which is our ice cream shop that is uh, in McConnell. And we have our G store or a general store where you can get coffee, school supplies, snacks, things like that. So most of these are in what we call the EUS Mall, which is a section of the McConnell Engineering Building that we have dedicated to um, EUS services. There are also a variety of conferences and competitions that we send McGill delegates to. So um, our kind of internal competition is the McGill Engineering Competition. There's over 10 categories of different things you can compete in. And if you get first or second in certain categories, you can be sent to the Quebec Engineering Competition. And if you do well there, you can be sent to the Canadian Engineering Competition. So this is a great way to meet other engineering students from different schools within Canada, um, and also just to kind of represent McGill and, and um, be a delegate. We also have uh, various conferences that we send delegates to. These conferences are held by the Canadian Federation of Engineering Students. So they are kind of like an overarching society of all of the engineering societies within schools in Canada. And there are other um, opportunities such as engineering games where you can be um, a delegate on behalf of McGill. We can go to the next slide. And I know that was a lot of information. I spoke really fast, uh, but don't worry. We have a, what is called the US Wiki. So this is a place where you can find out about anything and everything related to US. Um, here is the link and you can just type anything in the search bar. Maybe you want to know more about Frosh. Um, you can type in Frosh and you will read an article um, written by the Frosh Committee uh, from US. There are also various articles uh, about just the general culture. So if you wanna know more about a club or committee, you can look up their name and read more about what they do. And finally, there are opportunities on the EUS Wiki. So if you are wanting to get involved in the EUS, there are specific director positions and often clubs will post um, ads about if they're recruiting for their team. And it's a great way to figure out um, where you can kind of 
um, fit in within the US and take on more of a leadership role. We can go to the next slide. So um, if we are back in person, feel free to visit us at the US office. We're in room seven of the McConnell Engineering Building. Um, and also check your McGill emails because you will receive um, a weekly email from us on Monday talking about all of the various things that are going on within the society. We also have a Facebook and Instagram that you can follow and our website and the wiki linked there. And if you have any questions about anything that was said in this presentation, you can email me at president at mcgillus.ca. Thank you. Great, thanks. Um, so just as a last note, uh, you can contact us uh, at any time. Uh, if you have questions for student affairs, uh, here are a couple of emails for new students, um, new student advising.engineering at mcgill.ca or advisor.engineering at mcgill.ca. Our career center also has an email you can see here. Um, and please refer to our uploaded documents for further contacts and resources. Um, for example, if you wanna book an appointment with us um, at the Engineering Student Center, all those links are in that FAQ document. Um, and you can also find more info on the uh, new student uh, page of our website, which is listed here. And I think now we're going to go into a, a question uh, period. Um, so I think I'm going to hand it over to um, Patricia.